Today is the October 23, 2023 meeting of the Westport Commission on Disability. I'm Brian Gallagher, I'm the chairman of our commission. We have almost everybody in attendance today, a couple are, are not with us, but we're going to go forward and see what we can get accomplished. Uh, we're not having anybody participate remotely today, so we don't have to worry about making that happen. Has everybody seen the minutes of our prior meeting? I have. Does anybody have any questions, comments, changes that they would like to make? No. no. All right, we have a motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, the minutes have been approved. The next item on the agenda is, we're now at the, at the end of our season, and everything is hopefully, uh, and the town beaches have all been put to bed. Yes. But uh, last time I was down at Beach Avenue, the mobility mat was still down. Oh, uh, really? But that was several weeks ago. Yeah. Ross Moran sent me an email saying that they were going to take care of it. So I, I, I'm hoping that that's been done. It has been. As, uh, I've been down there. Oh, good. It's gone. And how about at North Beach or Baby Beach? It's gone as well. Taken away. I think uh, Highway Department took care of that. Great. And the Highway Department stores the yes. mobility mats through the winter for us. Yes. Well, that's good. Uh, speaking of North Beach, I don't have any. I, I know you always ask every every meeting about the uh, picnic table, but I haven't heard from uh, Sean. Leach, he said that it was on order, but right. you know, now we're in the winter, I suppose it'll come in the spring, but I'll get back on. on yeah, we should follow up with him. Following up to make sure. To make sure he knows that, that, you know, all he kept saying it was, it's, it's ordered, it's ordered, but. Yeah, that, that would be a nice addition. It would be. Uh, East Beach is open all year round for you to go park mm -hmm. and look at the water, and, and it's a great view. It's true. Uh, and Gooseberry, it's not Westport Beach, but it's nice yeah, view it too. Yeah, it's very nice. Yep, yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah, so we'll take yeah. Emma on that loop. Oh yeah. yeah. And so if you're going to park in one of the handicap spots, just make sure you either have a handicap plate or a handicap placard. But otherwise, you can just park there and, and look. It's great. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you need a beach permit now that the season has ended. Technically, or, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Either. Yeah, I don't know that the police. I don't know that the patrol there's no. Yeah, I don't sure. think there's any enforcement. Mm -hmm. The next item is something that we have a lot of stuff that we've talked about: the ADA transition team. Um, Martin's been working on this very closely, and, and one of the things that he and I have exchanged emails about is something that we just heard about just prior to the meeting is the accessibility for some of the, the website stuff and whether you are hard of hearing, deaf, or you have a visual impairment or you need to be able to access it through your computer keyboard. That's one of the things that one of the organizations is having a seminar about tomorrow. And they're going to try to talk about accessibility and things that you can do to improve accessibility. Now, I know that this town, through its ADA transition plan, has done several of the things to help improve accessibility, some of the buildings around. But there are some other things that uh, still need to be addressed and uh, apparently the, according to the woman that Martin's been talking to at the state level it was an S-P-R-E-D yes sir but yeah uh, the, the current grant season has been closed but the new season will open up because it's fall well they've already put in the application for the grant okay so she said she, we should hear by the end of the year and then it, it's accepted what she expects it will be accepted we'll start working on the plan in January and the website the Westport website has been brought up I mean as you mentioned some of it has been improved but it's not all, all been done so I know that's it's part of the five-year plan we're going to do a five-year plan mm. you know and then come revisit it in the next five years right so um, I'll make sure that we bring up but I think she already knows this and 
uh, and Jim Hartnett as well, that we, we want to make sure that the website is ADA compliant. And I didn't mean to throw that your way, but I did throw it your way. That's fine. Because I don't want to, you know, I just, <laughs> I just thought you got all that experience, but uh, did you feel, did you feel capable enough to, to handle some of that or do, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's all, it's all fairly straightforward. Okay. I think the, the bigger challenge um, at the town level is, is um, you know, who's basically the top coordinator for all website updates? Because That's I don't it. know that we will have the ability as the Commission on Disability to push the other departments to take certain trainings or even the way they update different things on the website. If the, you know, building department or Department of Health, if they're posting their own updates, uh, we, who, who are we to push into them how they should be doing it? Well, it's, it's ADA required, but, well, but, but should I mean, we be the police or, or have to do that? I mean, it's a lot Whoever's of office, I think, owns right. the website, right. essentially. So is it, is it Jim Hart at his office? Is it some other group within the town? If we can figure out who ultimately is responsible at the top level, then Good they, point. Can, they can push down. Yeah. So we can push to them. And then they yeah, I agree. I agree. Post. So um, training's available, not only the, the one that's t uh, tomorrow, but uh, Civic Plus, who's the company that... Uh, the town contracts with to host the website. Yeah, uh, they have their own training available. Uh, some for free through their website. Some at a fee. Uh, from what you've seen with the with the t entire town website, whatever you've looked at, is it what fifty percent done, or is there a lot of uh, well, lack? The main part, you know, the main structure of the website is compliant. The the devil's in the details. So okay. you know the. The detail that matters is that when uh, when individual organizations or groups within the town are making their own posts, and those posts have their own headlines, or their posts have their own pictures, they need to be posting those in a way that they're providing either alternate text for the pictures or uh, clues for the headlines so that a screen reader can find the headline mm -hmm. more easily. And it, it's very easy for them not to pay attention to that. So the website will look perfectly fine, but the code behind the scenes doesn't have what's necessary for a screen reader or for somebody with, who's got a vision impairment. I wonder if each department should be responsible for that, though. Or there should be a head person, as you're mentioning, a webmaster, when these different departments post should look at yeah, them. Yeah, I think they do all have different ones, like the school department. And really? I know the fire department. I don't know what the... Uh, Police department uses. But That's a lot of coordinating, isn't it? You know, so my understanding, you know, from how it happened for me, and so this is going back a couple of years ago, is that when when we were starting to refurbish the Commission on Disability website, uh, well, the first thing we had to do is figure out how to get access to it. Yeah. And uh, there was a a person in one of the other town departments that I had to reach out to, who then helped create a user account for me. And then once I had the user account, she said. You're on your own. You're yeah. all set. There's training available through Civic Plus. You can look at their website, but have at it. Mm -hmm. Well, in, in that is true that I would have access to make my own posts. But if if you don't have that understanding that when you're doing that, you should be, and it's not super yes. complicated. You just need to have the three or five best practices for when you post an image. See this alternate text. Yes. It says it's yes. optional, but it's actually required for for accessibility. And see this headline? It says it's optional to put a tag, but it's really required so that a screen reader can do it. I don't believe anybody in town uh, is having ongoing training refreshments for those types I of think, things. I think you're it's right. just they're able to post content, and the content is fine except uh, you know, if you're using uh, you know, an accessibility tool like a screen reader uh, or if you're colorblind. Yeah. You know, are, you, yeah. are you, every town department can basically choose their own I could go on and I could make a blue header and, and green text, but those are going to be difficult to read for somebody who's got colorblind. Right. Uh, it's the user can make too many choices that are not compatible with accessibility at this point. So, so again, yeah, uh, who can who can either mandate or recommend or suggest that there's training that's ongoing, or you know, if we were to produce a uh, an accessibility best practices okay. document. Yeah. Which we could do. I'd feel comfortable putting something together like that. Well, then who at the town would distribute it? Would it be well, can, can, or? When you have a chance before January, can you put something together for me that I can oh, present sure. to the transition 
committee yep. and say, and they may have their own, I don't know, you know, because we're going to be getting a consultant, be, yeah. right? The consultant yeah. may say, well, here's the five steps. And there's additional services that you can, you can uh, at a fee, pay for that may be good to put in a future grant or in the ABA transition where you can okay. have uh, third parties come in and they'll do, a, they'll do a full audit of the website and they'll give you a, a line Great. by line, page by page report of what's accessible, what's not, and where you have uh, opportunities to mitigate okay. issues. So we had that done at our... Uh, at our business uh, oh, you know, from an accessibility standpoint. So, you, you know, it depends great. on the size of the site. I think our site, it actually costs close to, I want to say $30,000. Wow. Uh, but they do a comprehensive page by page mm -hmm. review and give you a full uh, uh, steps to mitigate report. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I wonder if Jim Hartnett would know if there is one person that yeah. is in charge of all of it. So, and yeah, he's I'll ask him. The team with some. And perhaps once Rick gets a document to you, you can talk to sure. him about it. I will make sure that I bring it up. Uh, I, you know, I think it's one of the weaker points uh, as far as ADA compliance, the, the websites, and um, I'm expecting fully that Serpent and, and the consultant are going to look at that. And if they don't, I'll bring it up. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that's they're aware of that. Well, and this, you know, in this day and age, more and more people are using their computers to, try to, to do things. That's not the choice. And we yeah. were right. talking about right. this before that we started about, you know, people used to post notices on the, on the bulletin board in mm -hmm. town hall, and town members yeah. would go and check it out. But more and more, people aren't going to bother going into town hall to read the bulletin board. Of course. Board. They're just going to go online. Yeah. And see that's why it's so important I mean, it's, it's, really, I it's, it's going to be looked at it's going to flow up either I, I believe to either the selectman's office or to the town administrator's office mm. uh, you know and I know at last uh, town meeting it came up that, that you know people in town didn't have access to town reports ahead of the town meeting and that was a, a big concern so I, that's where I imagine the selectman and the town administrator ultimately will be taking greater control over what's posted when it's posted making sure it's you know, available for towns members, and as they're doing that, I think if we can, from our commission, slot into that and say, okay, okay. while you're encouraging people to be posting more regularly, let's make sure they're using these best practices okay. to make it accessible to them. So. Thank you. It's helpful. Yeah, that would be very helpful. Very good if we can um, get us all the way to the 21st century. Yeah. Yes. Of course, I know that I was drag kicking and screaming into the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> My kids were there long before I was. I know that uh, Serpent is asking for 15000 for a to award to, to, to get the, the consultant. So, And that would be to update our plan? Okay. told everybody that I was going to send letters to Representative Schmidt and uh, Senator Rodriguez, which I did uh, in support of the bills that were pending in the legislature, the bills prohibiting discrimination against disabled adults in juvenile court and family court. Apparently, if there's a problem with the child and a matter gets brought before the juvenile court or the family court. There's been some discrimination against a disabled adult of uh, that parent who may show up. And some of it might be just what we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. and there, there's not been clear access uh, or easy access for a disabled parent. So this bill is hopefully going to get enough support uh, prohibiting discrimination against disabled adults. Now again, I was surprised to learn that we had 3,000 people in our town who identify themselves as having some form of disability. So I imagine that the number throughout the Commonwealth is, is pretty large. And some of those disabled people are probably parents of school-aged children. So hopefully there will be enough support for this bill that it will get moved through and passed. I'm, I suspect that if it does, Governor Healy will sign it for us. Uh, 
the next thing I have is we currently have about $22,500 in our account. And as we've discussed in the past, it doesn't do us any good. It's not like when you all go out to lunch and you know, have <laughs> grand meals. We want to find ways to spend that money and, and donate the money for people with disabilities. Now we've already earmarked $5,000 to devote to the Hicks Bridge project. I don't know how far along that is or when they're going to ask for that. I, I talked to Jeff Bull, our consultant, who is uh, keenly aware of where that project stands. And last time I spoke to Jeff, he said that they're not there yet, but when it's time for us to donate the money, he will let us know. So there's that 5000 that we have earmarked. And then we have in the past discussed, do we want to make a continuing donation to the Recreation Department every year? Last year we donated $5,000. Of course, with the, the current fiscal crisis in this town, we're not even sure that there is going to be a Recreation Department. I know, department. let's think of that. And that would be a shame. Because they've been doing a lot of good things in our town. Yes. And they've been doing things for disabled children and, and disabled adults. So hopefully there will be a recreation department. Uh, we have a town meeting coming up sometime, I think in the, in the spring. Uh, there might have to be some hard decisions made since the override did not pass. And there you know, may be going to be even more layoffs in town. But hopefully we'll, we'll still have a recreation department. Well, not knowing whether we have a recreation department or not, I would suggest that we keep in mind, kind of like say $5,000 with the thought that they will be there. And once we get the report in December or maybe January, we're supposed to get a report of what the money was used for. Rick, you said that, you know, you've seen, you've seen it in action in some of the uh, recreation programs. So I think I would be all for it again as, as long as the recreation department's in, in full force. Well, you know, as I said, it's, it's good for us to find ways to, to donate money. And I agree, uh, and donating to the Recreation Department who finds, that finds ways to help the stable folks and kids in town with playgrounds and things like that. Yeah, I agree, it would be a good thing for us to do if we, you know, if we have a Recreation Department. We should hear more kind of the five thousand for now. If the if the recreation recreation department does get cut, we we're gonna have to think about whether we should take on the responsibility of making the playgrounds handicap accessible. I mean, uh, we could uh, get involved with Dana and find out what contact she has already because she supposedly had a foundation that was interested in helping. I hate to see that ball get dropped because yep. you know they yeah. they really and did we something. We did approve at last time meeting from CPC funds. I think the initial. Oh, good. Uh, the initial funding, right. for, okay, um, and, and they should be required to meet a certain standard for, uh, for ADA. But I think as we've seen elsewhere, the, the minimum standard for ADA and the functional benefit of accessible <coughs> playgrounds is sometimes two different things. Yes, so, you know I think that's where depending on who takes the lead and yes. or continues to have the lead with the playgrounds, I think we can. Well, even if the recreation system. department, you know, wasn't taking the lead on this, I would I would think that. You don't necessarily need the recreation department to do the playgrounds. You know, we yeah. could take it over with their help, of course. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But I, I would think Dana would be we, very interested. We have to just be careful about assuming responsibility for something. Yeah. I'm all in favor of donating money yeah. where it's needed, but we don't want to be responsible for maintaining anything. Right? No. Because we're just an advisory um, commission in town. With the, and we just happen to have funds that we would like to put to good use. So, yeah, you're right. If If... There are things going forward that the recreation department, or the former recreation department, uh, would have spent the money on, and we should think about uh, finding ways, like buying another swing or two more swings, and having somebody maybe in our highway department putting them in, uh, or putting if there are new mats that need to be put down. Uh, anyway, that's something yep. that we can certainly think about doing. Yeah, it's a big project. Yeah. At the last meeting, we had talked about um, 
the stickers for rooms. Oh, or, yeah. Um, they don't have anything like that now, oh. so that's maybe something that we could do. Cool. Um, for sure, with that. And then Westport just started, um, they've been starting a special education parent advisory committee as well. So I know they're looking to start Special Olympics. Oh, yeah. you're a dad? So I mean, maybe we could help with that as well. Yes. Those are just two suggestions that I had. Um, I think one thing that we could... Uh, I think it'd be amazing if we could help with that, but... Towards that end, I think even just the funding is one part of it. I think uh, another part that may be beneficial is for our commission to send a letter to the school department in support of efforts to... To do it. To support mm -hmm. Special Olympics and... Because most communities have them around us, yeah. and we don't. I know every year we uh, go to Dartmouth. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hmm. Yep. I agree. Yeah, so we can get in touch with the school department. Do you know anybody on the school department? That we yeah, can I do. Right. Yep. So we can contact them and find out if, if there's any interest. And yeah. What, what we can do to, to support. I think there's interest because they've, they've been trying to do fundraising on their own to, to get the money to do it. I guess it's about 15000 to start. Okay. So, but they're doing fundraising. So maybe if there's a balance of some right. sort that they need after the fundraising. That's great. To close the gap. Yeah. Because, again, you don't want to commit to something like that because we don't want to be the ones that fund it. Right. Because right. then what? Every year? Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, good, good, good point. But maybe just a sponsor of some sort. So I, sure. can, I can talk to them about that. Okay. But I think that would be an amazing thing for us to do. And the stickers are going to be, what, $75? You know, or what? I have no is idea. It, will we design them? Is that what you're saying? Can we do everything else. Yeah, yeah, that could be something that we could do I mean, does on our end. I think it's cool. Instead what, of the top finder. Um, did you send it along? To, um, there's some sort of form that you fill out that the fire department has. I think I didn't even know about that. That's that's great. So yes. So if you go to police dispatch and you ask for the disability form, you could do that for the computer system. We talked about that as well. So if the 911 call comes in. Um, they'll know that there's somebody in that house that is disabled. So it comes up on the computer that says yes. disabled resident here. Yes, and there's a form that you can okay. do. Yeah. So maybe when they do the form, they can get the sticker. Or yeah. if the stickers become available, whatever. Okay. So that was... Um, do they have an updated version of that form? Or should we just direct you? Because we had an updated right. version of it. No, you go that. right to dispatch at police. Yeah. Yep. So I think what I'll do is on our website, take down the old one and just, yeah, just tell, tell them, them to, to do, do it that. Yeah. Right. Yep. It's the police dispatcher that will do that. You can walk in and ask for the disability form. Okay. And then um, we'd also talked about the lock. I know you're talking about things for money, but this is just things that I had had um, in regards to that. The lock boxes for the houses. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's right at the fire station. You're going at $75 a person. So I don't know if that's something that we and also want how does that to work, the lockbox? What's, so what's the lockbox, the that... what they'll do is they'll put, um, we have one at our house. Um, it's just a box, and it's a key the that the fire the department box. has. Okay. Oh, oh, they have, okay. So they just unlock the box, mm. and they take the key to the mm. house out, and then they can open the door as a, if there's a disabled person there. Instead of busting the door Instead down. Instead of busting okay. the door down. Okay, cool. So will, that they, was, will they also, if you ask, will they send someone out to assess your home and determine fire hazards and things you can do to make the house safer? There was a, wasn't there the, was it the Westport Cares program or something? I thought they were doing something where they would send somebody out and check smoke detectors and give out flyers for. I'm sure something. there is. Yeah. I know, but I, I can I, ask about that. East so Highway had a sign outside saying they're having a fire safety. Yeah. day or something for a couple hours I guess the fire department comes down and, and maybe does what you're talking about you know um, I would agree on the um, on those lock boxes things like that that it's a fairly modest uh, you know if we were able to uh, you know number one if we thought that was a good idea number two if we do we could talk to the fire department and say you know when a resident applies for that lock box that's $75 if they're a disabled resident they can also apply and send us a letter and yeah, that's a great idea. Reimburse the lockbox. Yeah, those yeah. are the things that I think that is 
going to be beneficial for us yep. to do as opposed to yes. committing to any it's a safety thing instead of it being a barrier on oh, 75 dollars i want a fixed income well listen get the box and commission on disability can help make sure that you've got the i love that idea me too yeah so maybe another application of some sort to that will come directly to us yeah. in regards to that what are those boxes like what are they made of it's plastic it's, it's an so you put it in like a discreet place yeah. Is it like a real lock box that goes on the front door? Like well, there's some that go around the knob, no, or on the doorknob. Oh, yeah, I don't know. This is a, you know, the ones I'm envisioning. It's like a square box that clear screws into the house. You can't see any fasteners from yes. it. Yes. And it's got the fireman's key, like the universal key, so when they they can access it, your key's inside. But the screws all mounted around. No, you, yes. Okay. I, I bought a couple for the church that I, I belong oh, to, okay. which is a Dartmouth. The, um, Episcopal Church, St. Peter's, and you're exactly right. It's it's kind of made out of metal, and it has a it flips down like that. Yeah. This one comes with a um, numbers. You know what do you say? A combination. Oh, okay. But the fire department uses a key, correct? They have keys. So they would have a key on it, and then it opens up, and the key's right inside correct. there. But you're right that it does screw into the side of the, the yeah. building, and that way it's really but solid. Most commercial ones have a special reflector on it, so when they shine in the house, they'll see it. Oh, that's cool. Go right to the box. So. Commercial ones do. I know the yeah. ones the building. They make all different types. Like I said, they make one that go around the knob. Like a lot of times, real estate agents will use that. Say they're having an open house, right? And there's nobody in the house right. any longer. They'll just put that around the knob, and then they can get the key and get in there. Oh and show yeah, the no, it's not on the knob. Huh? huh? It's not on the knob. These. Uh, no, no, they no, have no, no, no. Yeah, we better and, be on the building. I assume that when you go to, to buy it, the fire department will tell you where to mount it. On well, the I'm house. sure, and then they have to. Yeah, they know, and they definitely note it because I've you know heard calls. And they'll say there's a lock box. It's located so and so. So. That you're getting your scanner. Fix. As my scanner fix. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that there's a retirement in your future, you can just turn that scanner off. Right, you can monitor the scanner full time. Listen. <laughs> no, that's the police scanner you want to monitor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's the fun one. You can be the auxiliary. <laughs> So I think if we if we decided that we wanted to consider reimbursing that lockbox cost, we may just need to see what the mechanics are doing on us because I don't know if the commission can can donate or reimburse directly to a person versus an office. Yeah, and we're not supposed to do that. Right, but if it was something where we were reimbursing seventy five dollars to the fire department, we could probably do that, but not to a individual. Well, we could set up a fund with the fire department, so if somebody comes in and needs the money, they can just apply through the it, fire department. Exactly, yeah. So the mechanics of how we would need to set that up. Right. So do we do it yearly? Do we give so many? Or, I mean, I don't think it's going well, to be Well, we can find out from the fire department. We could. Is there a, we could find out from the fire department. We, if, See what just happened there? Yeah. <laughs> if there is a demand. Yeah. And, and how many per year well, do they... Well, I don't think people know about well, it. And, and that's part so of the problem. Yeah. I don't know anything about this meeting. Yeah. And, and hopefully... If we talk about it enough, uh, and if there's anybody watching, they will know that this can, is an option. Yep. Absolutely. You know, I, I, our house, where my wife and I live, it's pretty much throwing any fire hazards around, but if I ask my wife, I'm stuck. So I, I would, it would be good to have that lockbox there. 100%. Yeah. I just have to convince Precious that that was something that she wants on the right. side of her house. <laughs> <laughs> it would be discreet. It's not. Yeah. No. It's just but those like, are just some of um, the ideas for. Yeah, that'd be great. Where do we leave off on the uh, transfer bench for the kayaks? We yes. haven't talked about it yet. Oh, well, let's talk about it. Yeah. And um, I know that I received. Uh, an email from Jeff Bow before today's meeting saying that he couldn't make it today. Um, and that's something that he would like to be involved in the discussion mm -hmm. of. But as we talked about it last time around, it's a great idea. I don't know how much demand there is, but Jeff was going to talk to the, the people at the kayak shop up at the head of Westport to see if they had any interest in perhaps storing the, the, the little cart that 
wheel. Well, now the two parts, right? You guys saw the, the video that I sent yeah. that there was a bench and then there was that chariot yeah. thing, right? Right, mm -hmm. Which I thought was pretty cool, but it would yeah, yeah. require more room to store. And I don't know, again, like I said, what the demand would be, but I would love to, you know, see that there and available because yeah. just to have the transfer bench doesn't really do a lot for you if you can't get, right. get it into, into the, the water. The, the bench probably doesn't take up a lot of room, but the, the wheels on the chariot are large. Yes, yes. And so that probably will take up most of the room. And I think that's what, hopefully when Jeff talks, uh, you can see if there's any interest. And even if he says no, I think we should come up with a place to put these things. We have the beach chair as well, right? That's in Town Hall. Is it in, 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 yeah, in the, the basement? basement of, yeah, with a lot of stairs. junk on top of it. And it'd be nice to have these different, um, you know, available. applications you know, that people can use. And, you know, we can yeah. say, pick one up here or wherever we want to store it. When we just have to make sure that number one is successful, and number two it's safe. Uh, you can't just have it anywhere. You know, people being people. No, I agree. Mm -hmm. Steal it. So if we can figure out a place, okay, like at the town hall is, is a great place. It's kind of safe, but is it accessible when people want to use it? Yeah, we can. Yeah, true. That's uh, where a lease or fire maybe, uh, if depending on space availability. Right. Somebody could just swing by there and get it. Well, and they would have to, if someone wants to use it, they might have to make arrangements in advance. Right. So that wherever it's being stored, knows to look out for someone coming. Yes. In. And then we we assign in to sign out when you take the equipment. Yes. So that you don't just yeah. Stick good point. In the trunk of your car and drive. Yeah, make sure it gets returned. Because you know, no matter what it costs, it's probably not inexpensive. I think it was six ninety five for the bench. Right. And then I think the chariot itself was fifteen hundred or something like that. So. That's so around you know two grand or yeah, that's you know. a, a substantial investment. You yes. don't want to see it disappear. Yes. Right. So we we have tried. We got to work that out for us before we sign in and sign out. Let's see what Jeff comes up with. You know, uh, with the kayak place. And if that does not work out, then we'll yeah. get some other ideas. Seems like they might not have the room to store it. I don't think so either. Well, he said something about isn't there a a little uh, outbuilding, a separate little building? But I don't think it's even big enough to store that chariot thing. The, the bench will be no problem, I yeah. would think, you know, but the chariot, the, uh, mm -hmm. the carry chariot there, whatever it is, would be a little more difficult. And again, we don't know how many people in town would actually make use of it. But then we'll have to advertise it, that's all, because people don't even know that's available, right? No, I didn't know the beach chair not. was available either. Of course not, yeah. You know, and if people know that, maybe they'll consider, yeah. you but know, especially if we make it easy for them to get it. That's mm -hmm. the thing. Because the beach well, chair, the right, you can't thing. just throw how it in the back gonna, of your trunk. You're going to have to get it. How are you going to get yeah, it there? It's big. I, think, uh, I know it's there because I went to uh, meetings for uh, the historical commission to get my addition. Mm -hmm. It's right there. You saw it? Yeah. I think on our uh, on the commission on disability portion of the website, maybe we could get the beach committee to link to it. Yes. Would be to make a dedicated page that just talks about beach and water access and then list each of the beaches or properties that are down and then what uh, resources are available for those. Um, so, you know, we can list North Beach, how it's got the, the mobile mats and the picnic table. And we can say, coming soon, talk to the beach committee. Yeah. Two year lead time, we're still waiting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then we can say, Nubble Beach, they've got the, the, the graded parking area plus the- That's a good mats idea. Yeah. But we really don't have any central place where you can go to say, okay, what are my options if I go to any of these beaches or properties to get in the water? Yes. Uh, and then at the head, it could be there's a transfer bench. And, um, well, I mean, wasn't the Eagle Scout working on something too? The yeah, scout? I don't know what happened to that. Well, he's, he's, been, he's been working with Jeff. Okay. And uh, I think they're still talking with Jeff. Okay. But part of the problem at the head of Westport, the ramp, when it gets wet, it gets very slippery. It does. And so uh, they were thinking about how to, how to actually do it. Of course, when you're working on Eagle Scout, you only have a limited period of time. Yeah. Right. You have up until you turn 18 and then you're done. Yeah. So I'm not sure where that young man stands in terms of- He was going of to put a railing up, I believe, yeah. right? Yeah, he was going to put a railing was, could, on that railing. Those were a little bit mobile, like in my situation, where I can move a little bit, you can hold on that railing. Right? Yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But, you know, when, it, when your feet hit something that's yes. slippery, yeah. Yeah. you really have to have 
Yeah. You could have some hold on to it. Sideways yes. with both yeah. hands on that railing. Mm -hmm. I think if we listed the uh, the properties, that would be one thing, and then we could have a section that talks about the generally available equipment. So you can there is a you know a beach chair uh, or wheelchair that can be. And once we know where we can check it out, where it's stored, how can somebody get access it, then we can listen. Excellent. Uh, I'll talk to Sean Leach about that. He's on the beach committee. And, and you know, it seems to me, just that we're talking about this, if, if people are interested in going to the beach, the first place they're going to look is not the dis disability yeah, committee. Right. True. Yeah, true. They're going to look at the, the beach committee. Yes, yeah. you're right. So they should, they should have that information about the beaches, the mobility mats, the, the parking up at uh, Beach Avenue, how it's stable. And if we do ultimately have this kayak transfer thing, you know, that should all be part, in my mind, it should all be part and parcel of what the beach committee does for people, right. including providing the information, storing the equipment, and making it accessible to people, mm -hmm. as well as having rules and regulations about signing for it and then bringing it back and signing off on it. But I'm not sure that Sean Leach would agree because you know, like every everybody in town, there's a lot going on. So. But he's very committed to accessibility. He's I think he would do the best he could to help us. Yeah, oh, I agree. It's just that, like everything in town government, yes, it's a committee or a yes. commission. It's not just one person. It's not you know. It's not the king in charge of everything. Right. You gotta you gotta make it so that everybody or a majority of people agree with it. Uh, but Sean's a great place for us to start okay. because he is uh, a very supportive. Yeah. Of what we do. I also sent around an email about the Architectural Barriers Act of 1968. It's called the ABA. And it says any building, any federal building that was designed, built, or altered after August 12, 1968, has to be accessible to people with disabilities. And if you find something that's not, all you have to do is file a claim with the U.S. Access Board. Mm -hmm. And immediately popping into my mind was the post office up on Route 6. Mm -hmm. Because their story is, no, well, we're grandfathered <coughs> in, yes. saying, that, saying that the building was built before the ADA went into effect under the George Bush first, or former, the first George Bush administration. And that was, what, 1994? But this ABA went into effect in 1968. And if that, if any building that was even altered after that time, if it's a federal building, it has to be accessible. Now, I have not been to that post office in a long time, but the last time I went, there was one handicap parking right. place, and there you know, out of, what, 10 or 15 places. That's right. But tr trying to get inside, I don't mm -hmm. remember how much of an ordeal that was. I don't even remember if there's a ramp getting up to the front. Remember room. that parking space was often utilized by other yeah, people would just want to run in and quickly drop mm -hmm. something. I don't in think there is a ramp, and I think the doors are fairly narrow, like so to come in and have to make that corner to get right. To the yeah, take a U-turn there, yeah. kind of right. And there's yeah. no door openers. Right. No. no. Automatic automatic door openers. Yeah. So, you know, but and if we ever encounter a building that is denying access. Keep in mind this the Architectural Barriers Act goes back to 1968, which can be a great help. And as I said, you don't have to file a complaint. It, 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 and when you file this claim form, it's all done anonymously. So mm -hmm. you, you don't even have to have your name out there as being the one who's complaining about it. And then the Access, the U.S. Access Board, comes out and does an investigation mm -hmm. on their own at their own expense. I mean, that would be a helpful tool to have. Uh, I also recently received notification that there is a new proposed development called Westport Lakes. And the only comment I had was that I want to be sure that 
because there were more than five or five or more houses that there were sidewalks that would connect the houses. Because it's, it's not always apparent on the plans that it's circulated that the sidewalks are included, even though they're required to be uh, according to what our town planning board has now changed the rules to say. So, Did it say we, where that was going in? Um, I, I don't remember. So Westport Lakes. There's only so many lakes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I know, right? Ponds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the top or one? No control. Are you going to look it up? Yeah. The forge. Yeah, and I, I just <laughs> kind of assumed that it's in the north end of town, yeah. but I don't know for sure. Yeah. Ponds. Does anybody else have anything they want to talk about before we get to the next item on the agenda? Funny you should bring it up, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> well, this morning, it's so quiet. And this morning's Boston Globe, isn't this cool? On the right front page yeah. is uh, Poor Service Stymies Wheelchair Users. Oh. Oh, and wow. it's basically, you know, an article just in support of the bill that's gone through and all the trouble people have, and there's only two major companies about the maintenance yes yeah, yeah. so great. i thought it was great that they you know i mean the more the more information the more that'll get changed uh, hopefully yeah. it's just i mean that's unacceptable i can't imagine if you couldn't get a pot we've been months. having a really hard time yeah, i bet yeah. you have yeah you were talking about well not this gal but i think this guy here one, one of them was he just needed an armrest and they sent the wrong armrest that took like oh, eight yeah. months we got and took another six months to get the right armrest and then somebody to come in and put it in, right? We got a chair for my daughter, and the back is just, it's supposed to be collapsible, but you can't, most people can't make it work. Mm. It's really difficult. So they agreed they're going to get us a new back for it, but that's going to take months and months. So well, it took my, over my, a year to get the chair to begin with. When my power Crazy. chair stopped working on the day of my son's wedding, Cheapest. it took months to get it repaired. Because I had to go through the whole insurance process. I was going to say, you got to get approval first from the insurance, insurance company. There's company, so many steps. Yeah, yeah. The insurance company was good, but once I got the approval to get new motion, or new motion, yeah. Get them to give me an appointment, even to have somebody come out and look at the chair, um, and then install the chair. It, literally, from the day that it broke until the day that it got fixed, it was months. And, and as a result of the chair, it was the joystick controller. Yeah. Of course, now I'm, I'm a little anxious every time I get out because if I'm if I'm half a mile yeah. away from the house and it breaks down, I'm in trouble. Oh yeah, or my wife's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then when it takes months to get it fixed, on top of that, and when the gentleman from New Motion who came, he was a very good guy, very nice guy. I'm very confident, but he said how difficult it is to find technicians. They have empty, they have available spots. I can't find anybody I heard that. to take the position. And he just fortunately happened to have another call in the Westport area. And they said, oh, I'll just stop in and see what I can do for these people. Was yeah. there any uh, resolution in that article about where the, what the state of the... I, I don't, I'm look, that's what I'm looking for now is that bill that's, that's in conference now and then, hopefully we'll get past is supposed to set a timeline, right? In other words, your repair has to be within a month, let's say, instead of months and months. Plus, if they can't fix it, there's like a lemon law that they have to give you another chair instead of making you wait. Um, there's no resolution. I think it's still in committee. It sounds we, like a business opportunity. Yeah. 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 We, we did send letters to Representative Schmidt and uh, Good. Senator Rodriguez in support of the wheelchair warranty bill. And, but the problem is it only extends the warranty from one year to two years. And if anything happens after that two year mark, then you know you basically have to pay for it yourself. Mm -hmm. But you also don't have a problem finding somebody who's willing to give you a, a, mm -hmm. an appointment to come. It says here that uh, this bill would require two year warranties on new chairs, a period during which chair owners could avoid the cumbersome insurance authorization process. Um, companies would have to 
assess chairs in need of repairs within three days if a chair is unusable and provide a temporary replacement chair if needed within four days. A supplier would have to provide a new chair or a refund if repeated attempts at repairs don't work. And if the uh, warranty isn't honored, the Attorney General uh, could sue for damages on behalf of the chair owner. Yeah, and that, that's been pending for a while. That was what yes. they sent a letter of, letters out. Uh, and part of the problem I had was when my chair broke, I was never offered a replacement. Oh, that's yeah. terrible. No, that's we have crazy. never been offered no. that either. I it's still pretty slow because it, I, I, I fix it. where they're pushing it because if, uh, if they're depending on a private business to provide that right. service, yes. but they're going to put that burden on them, that you're not going to, you're going to run out. It's like uh, insurance companies leaving Florida. It's just not, right. it doesn't right. make any business. It doesn't make sense. Versus Mass Health taking that on and saying that this is a, you know, it's more of a public service provided through Mass Health, but then, then the state is now taking that burden on themselves. It'd be interesting to see how that mm. turns out. It says, of course, the industry representatives opposed the legislation, saying that the bill's deadlines are unrealistic and that extending warranties wouldn't address the backlog backlog of work that repair teams have. I mean, that's the problem too, right? I mean, they just don't have the... Well, that's the problem because they don't have enough people and right. they can't get to the projects yeah. quickly enough. And then when you put these requirements on them, you've got to be there in three days. And yeah, how, it, it how can they... Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, you're right. It, it, it's a difficult balance. Yeah. Yeah, because in, in putting more stringent requirements in, they may actually push car uh, providers out of right. the state. Right. And now you're no better. And even though the ones that are in the state would have to provide that level of service, there's nobody in the state to do it. Because there aren't, there aren't a lot of companies that are in the business of making power wheelchairs and marketing them. Yeah. You know, and they are, they are not inexpensive to purchase, but they don't have a big market. For them. There aren't a lot of people in the Commonwealth, for example, and you know, you know, we might say, all right, well, there are maybe a thousand people in our town who could use a power wheelchair. Well, how many towns are there in, in Massachusetts? And so that's not a big market for these companies. Right. And I'm sure they don't know, they're looking at the profit versus. Right. You know, been a long time since I've been in the business of business, so I'm a great one for saying, oh, they don't make a profit. That's not my problem. Right. But you, know, you understand it. That's what they're, they're in business to make a profit. Anything else? And I'm looking at you, Martin. That's all I got, uh, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, that brings us to the next. Is our next meeting, mm. uh, and the meeting in November falls on the 27th. The Thanksgiving holiday is that weekend, and then the December meeting falls on Christmas Day. So we can either move those dates, or we can do what we did last year and say, let's just cancel the meeting and go into January. So, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I'm for that. Yeah, we can correspond in the meantime on some of the things sure. we talked about. Okay. In January, I'll have a better idea about the uh, serpent, the uh, consultant, and all that ADA transition plan. So it'll be a good time to re, re help me. What's the word I'm looking for? Convene. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> to convene. Reconvene. Reconvene and uh, I mean, report on that. Me. Yeah, I was going to say, we can keep Kim's consecutive attendance I mean, policy going no. yeah. at the end of the year. Oh, this is, we'll do it just for you. <laughs> just do that. You won't be off vacationing? Um, in January? In January. That's, Maybe. Yeah. No, I still have children, you know. <laughs> you won't take them with you? You still have children. Yeah. You have school and stuff. The like, things, yeah, so those things. How many kids, Kim? Four. Oh my, so that would keep well, busy. Take care of them. Yeah, no, he could. Yeah, hmm. but he wouldn't <laughs> want me to go to a vacation without no, him retiring and all that. I, yeah. <laughs> I understand completely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And how old is the youngest child? Uh, Brenda's going to be 16 on November 4th. Her okay. sweet 16. 
Wow. That's the baby. She's only oh. a freshman, so I still have... You have a ways to go. I do. So you guys, you're stuck with me for yeah. a little bit. <laughs> That's good. Well, fortunately, uh, college can be very affordable in this state. Yeah. When my daughter was going through it, there was even some talk about making community college free. That's right. Yep. If anybody, if you had, if you maintained to be average or above. Right. Yeah. And there's a lot of assistance, and there's the John, John Abigail Adams Scholarship as yeah. well. Yeah. So if, if any child in this Commonwealth wants to go to college, community college is a great place to start. My daughter uh, went to Bristol for a couple of years. Great school. Yeah. Got, found a great advisor, and then ultimately she kicked up to a very reputable four-year college. Nice. So, yeah. And, and you can keep the rates of the community college if you keep your grades up. You yes. Know. And the mm -hmm. nice thing, Kim, is if the child goes to community college, they can live at home and they can commute. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, I would really love that, but I think they're done. <laughs> I think they're ready. Yeah. They're ready. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if Brian's going to be home. <laughs> Especially if my husband's home. Yeah. Well, the time for him to start looking for a new job. No, he's, I, he's got one year to figure that out, he said. To himself, so I'm going to give him that. Makes sense. No, yeah, good. Sure. Good. He's a still young man. He's I know. Very capable. I know. Got a lot of ideas floating around. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to put Brian home with you. So, Brian, what are you doing after this? Yeah. <laughs> you got to go home and talk to my husband. Somebody, to talk, somebody <laughs> needs to talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like an introduction. No. Yeah. That'd be great. great. <laughs> yeah. Who's going to go home with me to explain to my wife what I did to your marriage? <laughs> <laughs> I'll go there. Yeah. <laughs> well, then our next meeting will be January 22 of 2024. Wow, huh? Is something? The yeah. Board of Health has not yet determined their schedule for 2024, so I don't know if we'll be in this room, the annex, or down at the uh, town hall. So town hall. Yeah, the select board. Uh, meeting room. So I, I will confirm that and put it into our agenda for the January 22 meeting. Okay. Anybody have any final thoughts? Anything that just kicking around and bubble to the surface that they want to share? Okay. No. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are out of here, and thank you so much.